that was when I started my interaction with Aswaju. And I know that on several occasions I had to hold the cup for him. So even then. And then everybody saw what happened when Aswaju was given the flag. Our honorable chairman, or their honorable chairman now, Abdullah had to help him to hold the flag. Everybody saw it. Come on. Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this YouTube channel. If you didn't know, first time you see this channel, make sure you not forget to hit on the red subscribe button. If you don't subscribe before, thank you and God bless you. And if you didn't know, first time you see this Facebook page, pick in this blog, make sure you not to like and follow this page for more videos of it to come your way. My people, wonder shall never end. You don't end for all I met you, you don't finish, butter, butter. Guys, take your time watch this video. Make sure you hear from Tinibu S. Kampe Director Najatu. Don't spit out everything. Concerning Bola Metinibu. He said Bola Metinibu talks say even though he become the president of Nigeria, he no go do nothing for Nigeria. He no go do shishi. He no go make Nigeria better. He go do what's past Muhammad Buhari. Guys, we're gonna watch this video. All the truth we be say yes, we now need to know now inside this video again. Guys, share this video. Not just watch and go. Share this video. Let this video go viral. When I see the reason we talk, say we don't need APC government, we don't need PDP government, they'll be the same people. Guys, this woman let us know say Shetima and uh, Ali Modu Sheriff. Now they be the people we want to Nigeria, not in Bola Metinibu. They just put Bola Metinibu for front, make it just the run, follow them. But the people we want to the country now Shetima and Ali Modu Sheriff. When I know now this woman, if I expose them, say Ali Modu Sheriff and Shetima, now they be the grandfather and everything about Boko Haram bandit for Nigeria. Guys, take your time, watch this video. But please share this video for me. Not just watch and go. Share this video. Tinibu has been exposed. Finish. Pata pata. Tinibu don't lost 2020 the election with this video. Watch this video. They will come back. APC Presidential Campaign Council. Ajia, good morning and thank you very much for joining us on the morning show. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Well, Ajia Najatu Mohammed. Um, do you accept your characterization as a mole in the APC because the APC is that you are a, you are a mole and that you have gone to where you came from and secondly do you feel vindicated by what happened in Abeokuta yesterday where the candidate of the APC accused the Buhari administration either by way of innuendo or by suggestion or directly uh, with reference to powers that be, that uh, narrowly design and force scarcity, those two major issues faced by Nigerians, have been designed to sabotage him. Uh, in the first place, um, there's a difference between the Tinibu Campaign Council and the APC. Only the APC could have had the, the, the right to expel me from the party, not the Tinubu Campaign Council. The Tinu, uh, APC doesn't belong to Tinubu. And I gave my resignation to the chairman, somebody that I have a lot of respect for. Not just that, but they know how hard and where they have gone from pillar to pole to beg me to please come back. But I can't go into personal issues because when you indulge in personal issues, personal insults, you are not only condescending, but you are diverting attention from the main issues, the main problems that are de bedeviling this country. So I don't want to waste my time on them. But I want to stand my ground that I left because Tunubu is incapable. And I have been vindicated yesterday. Everything about Tunubu is about himself. When he wanted to contest, he said it's his turn. He wants uh, uh, to, to hold the knife that will cut the pie. It's not about the country. It's about him, his ego, his corruption. It's all about that, his control, his material control and the psychological control of the people of this country, in, but particularly the people from the Southwest. I have heard him when we were in ACN saying that when he sleeps, the Southwest sleeps. And when he wakes up, the southwest wakes up that is his mentality it's a like um an emperor mentality which is very wrong however to to be very very serious uh 
when I when he begged me and Falake begged me to go into the campaign council I, I, I rejected they know that I didn't want to go into the campaign council but they begged me Tinubu it's still ringing in my ear in the name of Allah Hajia, in the name of Allah accept this appointment I said sir I will not accept the appointment until you tell me what you have for us up north he invited me to London. I went to London. I sat with him for two hours. Most of the time he was sleeping. I asked him what he had for us up north because we have extremely serious uh, security problems. He told me that he didn't have anything. I said, sir, you mean that you want to be president and you don't even have a blueprint? He said he doesn't have a blueprint. He doesn't have a blueprint according to him because if I have a blueprint, I'm quoting him now, then I might be killed. And uh, because I will be stopping on too many toes. I said, sir, I, in that position that you are looking for, you don't think of death. You don't think of assassination. Anyway, that is gone. But I've been vindicated yesterday. Nigerians have been suffering for over a year for lack of fuel. And more Nigerians are going to suffer and are already suffering for the fact that they give a very short notice and make the new notes unavailable. So Nigeria now will have to resort to trade by butter. Tinubu did not say anything. All he's thinking of is the bullion vam that has been made available for him to, 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 buy, to buy votes. I've been vindicated. Alhamdulillah. All right, well, well thank you. Let and you think. know, sir, the... Who's glad? Oh, go Who's ahead. Glad. Yes. Yeah, so, what, so what, what, what I'm trying to say is this. Nigerians should be focused. We have a very, very serious problem. Nigeria is at the brink, especially as it concerns security. You must have an enabling environment in order to do anything. So you cannot take someone that is virtually senile and another person that has been associated on several occasions with funding terrorism. That is Kasim Shatima. Kasim Shatima, we should not forget uh, uh, Kabiru, Kabiru Sokoto. Kabiru Sokoto was one of the, the, the most wanted terrorists and he was found and arrested in his house. Let us understand and let us not forget this terrorism, this banditry, this carnage is not just happening by mistake. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. A multi-billion indust dollar industry because it, 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 it takes a lot, a lot of money on defense budget. It has a lot to do with the sale of drugs. It has a lot to do with mining and illegal bunkering and illegal and illicit uh, 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 mining. And look at the areas that are, that are generally affected by this. Take the Northeast, for instance. In the Northeast, you have the blue diamond. That is a strategic mineral. You have uh, uh, oil at the Chad Basin that is being explored right now, but illegally. You have Zamfara. If you go to Zamfara, Zamfara has more gold than, than, than Ghana. Zamfara's gold is being traded in Dubai and other parts of the country. There is a market called Nigerian gold in Dubai. Go and check. So who is doing this mining? Most times they are the governors, the people in power. They are the ones doing it in connivance, in connivance with foreign, foreign, foreign mercenaries. You can, can you remember? Have we forgotten when they said there is a no a no fly zone in Zamfara? Why should there be a no fly zone? There isn't even an airport in Zamfara. But aircrafts land and they, they take off from Zamfara. And let me tell you something else. In Zamfara, every container that comes from China ends up in Zamfara. You know why? Because in Zamfara, every the soil in Zamfara has all the strategic minerals that you can think of. So when the containers come in from China, they land in, 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 in they end in Zamfara, and a bag of Zamfara soil is today sold at five thousand. So they need to displace the people to allow them 
to continue with their mining. I, I, I mean, it's multifaceted. You can, and these are people that one has been severally accused of harboring terrorists, even recently. And why? Let us ask, why should Shatima be visiting along with his governor, be visiting and making a solidarity with a police officer that was, uh, that was being tried for drug trafficking. Why? So you begin to put these things together and, and, and you begin to understand why Nigerians must retrieve their country. We can't allow this thing to happen. Mm. Very heavy statements and uh, um, things you've said just now, Hajia. But I'd like to ask you two questions based on some of the things you uh, mentioned yes. when you um, tendered your resignation. Yes. Still going back to the status of the health of the candidate of the APC, presidential candidate of the APC, where you said that when you had a meeting with him to discuss the issues that you were very particular and passionate about, he couldn't hold the conversation as he was sleeping yeah. for most of the time, and then he couldn't raise the teacup. We just interviewed um, one of the APC uh, front, uh, members of the campaign, and he said that, that you know, largely untrue, that he would see during campaigns, the APC presidential candidate is very fit, he's able to hold a broom, he wears an agbada, he's able to dance around, and so your claims, hold on, I just wanna, uh, let me just land on that, that your claims that he's not healthy enough, <laughs> I want to yeah. hear from you now, based on your interactions yeah. and working with him closely. It has been debated a number of times as to how important the health status of a candidate ought to be to electorates. I'd like you to expand a bit more on that. And then the second question I have for you is based also I on your resignation letter, that political parties do not have, in Nigeria currently, do not have ideological differences. And so you were tired of playing in places where people didn't have ide any ideology. They were all the same. I'd like to understand, you know, what that statement means and then what it means for your future in the politics of Nigeria. You know, uh, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that I was, I didn't meet Asiwaju in APC. We met at ACN. I was ACN. I didn't go to CPC. I have, I keep saying, I am the first person to start Buhari's campaign. They are still living on my structure, the Northwest. That is one. And any time we try to make an alliance, particularly with the Southwest, we started with the G4. Ojikalu, Buhari, Atiku, and Asiwaju. This is as way back as 2007. In fact, it was, yeah, we, yeah 2007. And it was always Buhari that opted out. He didn't want the alliance, for reasons best known to him. Because he did not want a contest in which he will not be the sole candidate. And he did not want a contest that people will not step down for him. So we did that once, we did that twice, we did that. On the third time, I said, I'm not going with Buhari because I'm not his slave. I decided to stay with the ACN. That was when I started my interaction with Asuaju. And I know that on several occasions, I had to hold the cup for him. So even then. And then everybody saw what happened when Asuaju was given the flag. Our honorable chairman, or their honorable chairman now, Abdullah had to help him to hold the flag. Everybody saw it. Cameras don't lie. But you see, madam, what bothers me is not so much his physical health. There was a president in America that sat on a wheelchair and ruled from a wheelchair. But when you are mentally deranged, it's unacceptable. Because you can't decipher, you can't think, you can't do anything. You go to sleep any day, any time. See what is happening in Cameroons. Let me tell you, in Cameroons, they see their president about nine, in nine years, they see him once. And they still accept, Nigeria is not Cameroons. Nigeria is not Southern Sudan. We are far more sophisticated than that. So that is for that. And then the second question you ask, yes, I stand by it. Look at the manifestos of all the parties. The only one that is different, to be very, very honest, is 
not not the labor party as a labor party but the ob as a movement however all the political parties have no ideological difference and what i'm saying is this because politicians have shuttled including peter obi they shuttled from one party to another Tinubu was AD, then AC, then ACN, now APC. Buhari was APP, then AMPP, then uh, CP, CPC, and now APC. The same is true to Atiku and Konkwasu, and even Peter Obi. So why do I, so it's like a robe they wear. When it suits them, I wear this robe to be on this platform. But it's the same person. It's the same person. So Nigerians must be looking at the person, not the robe the person is wearing. That is at their convenience. That is my position. Okay, well, a couple of things. Some will argue and challenge that, yes, you say he's mentally deranged. Prove it medically. You don't have his health records. That's what some will say to you frontally. <laughs> Second, no, hang on a minute, Ma. Please, let me just finish this assumption. Secondly... <laughs> A lot of people will also argue with you when you say he says he's got nothing to do. He's got a manifesto out that talked about what he'll do as regards insecurity. Third, in one of your statements, you said Tinubu and Atiku are the devil at the deep blue sea, but you rather go to the deep blue sea in Atiku. Yeah. But he too carries yeah. a lot of his own baggages, yeah. which you are aware of, mm -hmm. which has been spoken about. Yeah. And when you look at this, people will say yes. that all of this you are saying is just sour grapes. Because why do you wait till now before you left? Are you too, you cannot say you are not benefited for the APC government you claim has failed. Are you had benefited no, no, too no, from no. them no, up no, till no, now? No, what, what? no, no, no. I take exception to that, sir. Okay, I well. really take exception to that. Because, yes, I take exception to that because you have to name my benefit. You see, unfortunately, people think that when you are appointed for instance i work at the police service commission is that what you call a benefit so nigerians see appointments as a means to which they can acquire money working at the police service commission in the first place i'm a part-time commissioner that has no salary i stay for months without a sitting allowance but i still work and remember if I want financial benefits, I want to take you back to the time. Obas and Joe offered me ministerial appointments twice, which I rejected. The first one, I went, I got a standing ovation in the Senate. But then we had problems. We had factions, the Saraki faction and the, and the other faction. I belong to the Saraki faction. So having gone through the Senate, the senators from AMPP then decided that they had already expelled me from the APP. So AMPP. So I must, uh, uh, they cannot accept me to represent, to be uh, the minister uh, representing the AMPP. So what did Obasanjo said? Obasanjo called me and said, come into the PDP. Be a card carry member of the PDP and I will make you minister as a PDP member. I rejected it. The second time i also rejected it in 2003 jonathan offered me ministerial appointment we were given ministerial appointment the same day with uh, bala mohammed he picked me from my house and we went to see jonathan who offered me that appointment i said no i did not do safe nigeria i'm one of the conveners of safe nigeria i did not do it to be a minister I want to continue with my activism. I don't want anything to keep me back. And mark you, when people, are, you know, people do not seem to be able to make a dichotomy between service to country and personal aggrandizement. I know there is a difference. When I swore by the constitution to defend the constitution of Nigeria, I did not swear to defend Buhari or the APC. And the government of Muhammad Buhari is not, the pro is not a property of the APC. It's the property of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and all Nigerians. So what are we talking about? So what is the benefit? People must stop seeing governance as a means of personal, personal uh, 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 achievement or or personal uh, way of making money. That is the bottom line. I'm different. I have not benefited anything from the APC.
But why Atiku? And I'm not doing Atiku today for any... I, I, I gave my reasons. And my reasons were... I said, Peter Obi is a movement. Yes, I, I said that. I also I said that because it's for the first time, for the first time, Niger the Nigerian youth have a voice and they are coming together to form some kind of movement. It's not even about Peter Obi. The, the movement will outlive Peter Obi. But I said they have structural problems. I'll give you an example. Buhari since 2003 was getting 15 million votes, but he couldn't be president. Why? In spite of, in spite of the, the, the cult followership the North gave to Buhari, why didn't he win? He didn't win because he had structural problems, because he could not break bridges. It took the alliance that he had rejected severally with the Southwest in particular that he was able to become president. That is the only reason. And what I'm also saying is that I have no luxury of time. There is no luxury of time. That is why I said I had to choose between the devil and the deep sea. And then, as far as Konkoso is concerned, Konkoso did a great job for us in Kanu, especially in human development. I think the best thing that anyone can give to anybody is education. Because if you, that is why most governors withdrew education from our schools. They withdrew education from our schools because they want this sea of energy, able bodied men. They are like uranium. Our, our, our kids are so energetic. They are like, like a virgin uranium, which you can use either to generate power or to make into an atomic bomb. In this case, our youth have been, have been uh, denied education so that they are perpetually cannon fodder for, 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 for rulers, especially our governors. You, you understand? So that is why I said I had to choose at this point in time. And I made it clear, explicitly clear, that I don't belong to the PDP. In fact, I said I am partyless. I'm partyless because there are candidates in other parties that I feel I should go and support. So if I say I'm in the PDP, then I will have problems. It's I like can. from frying pan to fire. I, yeah. I, I need you to um, yes, I can assist you. to some clarifications. First, you said on yes, this program sir. that the candidate of the APC Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu is mentally deranged. That's a, a very strong thing to say. Yes. No, you, you can't say yes because it, it's, if you look at uh -huh. Section 131 of the uh, 1999 Constitution, mm -hmm. Section 131, listing the qualifications for anybody seeking the office of the president, says that look, the person cannot be of unsound mind. That would be a ground for disqualification. Now, having made that point publicly, you may be yeah. called upon to come and prove it. And we are not the ones to go and prove it because yeah, you said it. All, the, the, no, no, yeah. no, hang on a moment. Look, hang look, on a this moment. Is a, no, no. Yeah, okay. O okay, that's one. Number two, at what point mm -hmm. did it occur to you that this candidate, you have issues, you accepted position as director of organizations, you were part of the party in, uh, in, uh, from 2015. You supported uh, President Buhari. Uh, just now, just about uh, uh, 30 days or so to the election, you then come around and you say you think your candidate is mentally uh, deranged. That, that's a very strange thing to say. And then finally, yes. finally, finally. Yeah, I know. I want uh, you, let, a third thing I want you to clarify. Let, yeah, let, uh, a third thing I want you to clarify. Yes. The uh, Tinubu camp, speaking through, uh, I think it's Mamu Jega, says that, uh, look, that you were sacked, that you didn't resign, that you were sacked for incompetence and being very quarrelsome. And uh, your quarrelsomeness has also been well, indicated. You see, you, uh, I'm quoting uh, Mamu Jega, I'm not the one making it up. And that your quarrelsomeness even led you to resigning from the police service commission. I just want clarifications on all these three points. No, no, no. I did not. I did not resign from the police service commission. Okay. You see, uh, it's really unfortunate 
Mahmoud Jega should tell us who bought him a house recently in Abuja and why he joined that team. I'm just leaving that with him. However, let me answer your questions. You see, this is a country, unfortunately, that is bedeviled with so much corruption. If Asuwaju were not what he is with stupendous amount of money to bribe everyone from the courts and everything, he should not be, he will not be contesting elections. Because from his name to his school to his health, everything about him is based on lies. And nobody wants to prove that. Nobody wants to prove that because everyone is bribed to say what they, they want to say. However, Nigerians can see. They see him every day. The last clip I saw of him is calling Atiku uh, the governor of Anambra State. For God's sake, what else do we need? We don't need a doctor to, say, to tell us that. We, need, we don't need a doctor when somebody is blah, blah, blah. -ing. We don't, we don't need a doctor to say it. Look, people must understand that ill health, dementia, is a natural process of human beings. It's, 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 it's nature. It's not as if it's his fault. But it's also not our fault. So we don't have to accept somebody that cannot decipher. That is, that is the truth. You understand? So I am still insisting. And at what point did I resign? I told you from the beginning that I didn't want the appointment. He, Aswaju, begged me. He begged me. He said, in the name of Allah. This was what he said. Let him deny it. I didn't want the appointment. I didn't want to be part of it. Look, I'm a businesswoman. I'm not a politician that makes money out of politics. Go and look at my history. If I want to make money out of this blood money, I would have made it long ago, but I don't want it. And they must, he must as well. Okay, let, why was, why is he, why is he not going into debates? Why is he not allowed to talk even in rallies? You know what they do in rallies now? What they do is say, let's dance. Bum, 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 bum. They, just, they start dancing. It's an insult to Nigerians. Even if it are lies, please lie to us. Lie to us about what you want to do. Why is he running away from debates? He's running away from everything. He went to Chatham House. He was asking others to answer questions for him. And Nigerians accept this. Why was he saying that? If he could answer, if he could think, if he can decipher, why is he allocating questions to other people? Are they the ones that Nigerians are going to vote for? I stand my ground. Yeah, I stand my ground. All right, okay. So um, just let me ask you with regards to your statement around the fact that Ajibola Metin who bribed his way into winning the APC presidential primaries. In fact, you did allude in a recent interview yeah. to the fact that he, um, the vice president of the, of the country, Professor Yemi Shibajo, would have been a better candidate, but for the powers that be, I'm um, using his terms, in the Lagos Ibadan press um, arrangement. That, you know, that, that was what made yeah. it impossible for yeah. him to emerge. I'd like you to give a bit more you know, clarity on this, because you, you just talked about Mamu Jega being given a house. Are there other inducements that had been yeah. given to APC leaders to ensure that you know, Bola Metin will emerge as presidential candidate? You see, let, let me tell you about the fallacy of the Nigerian press and the generality of the Nigerian elites. Osi Banjo, any time Buhari, just one example, any time Buhari leaves the country, the dollar collapses. Why? Osiba Joe was given a few weeks, just a few weeks to run this country. And he put the country on the right track in terms of security, in terms of the finance. A very brilliant professor. If they really and honestly wanted a power shift to the southwest, is he not also Egba Omo Odudua? What is wrong with him? They refused because he could not share money. And let me tell you, I know, uh, like from our candidates, uh, our, our, our delegates from Kano, I can tell you that each ballot box, the name of Asuaju was put on it. 
all you are, pay, are paid to do is to go and put it in the box. It wasn't their choice. And we have seen clips of governors sharing money. Governors, such a disgrace. This is the first time that I know that governors do not even sponsor presidential campaigns. Normally, the governor sponsors the presidential campaign in his state. But this time around, it's Asuaju that is doing it. Because everything about Asuaju is about money. There is nothing like honor. For God's sake, what do we want? We, can we continue to wallow in this? Can we continue to deceive ourselves? Who are we lying to? We are only lying to ourselves. We see these things. The truth has been written on the horizon. Why are we now turning the other eye? And not just that. I, 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 as far as uh, my so-called uh, expulsion from the APC is concerned, what took them so long? They, they, could, they should have told the public before I resigned that they have kicked me out. But unfortunately, because they are so silly, they are saying after my resignation, they actually uh, uh, kicked me out. You know, it's, they, they have no respect for, for the psyche of Nigerians. They think that we are all a bunch of idiots. We are not. Okay. We can think. Okay. I took my time because they pleaded with me. I'm a Muslim. He said, in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, please accept this appointment. I respect your stance. I said, sir, you have to give me a blueprint. He said, that doesn't have a blueprint. Okay, okay, okay. What is in a manifesto? Uh, uh, okay. I just told you that the manifesto of all the parties are the same. So okay. what is in a manifesto? Uh, okay. So I'd like to ask you the question based on what you said last. Knowing all of this, mm. what took you so long? And why now? You know, sir, one of the problems is this. I didn't want to be arrogant. And let me tell you what I did as a last resort. What I did as a last resort is I went, you know, knowing that this is Asiwaju's handicap. And having pleaded with me in the name of Allah to accept it, I had to be humble. But I didn't just stop. But my conscience was pricking me all the time. Because I know that even the Lagos Chamber of Commerce gave him their demands. But look at a whole north without a demand. So what did I do? As a last resort, I want to tell you this. I tried and I sat with all the people I think in the APC, the northerners in the APC that are the real opinion molders. For three months, I have been trying to get them to come together for us to sit and give him an agenda. So that, because when the governors go to see Aswaju, they go and block to intimidate him. So I said, why not this opinion molders from the APC? Why don't we sit? That was the last, I said, let us sit with him. For three months, I was going from pillar to pole to get them to accept this. They say, yes, 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 it's a good idea. But it's each to himself. So I had to go. I had to go. Okay. And I can't sit on the fence. Okay, okay. Those sitting on the fence are either cowards or hypocrites, and I can't okay. do any of, of those. Okay, Ajia, on that note, we have...